is Mr. Sujit Bhattacharya, so I would like to give a brief introduction about Mr. Sujit Bhattacharya. But before that, let me also tell you some rules of the game. Uh, when you intend to ask a question, please type the question in the chat box and it will be answered uh, by uh, a guest, Dr. Janat Shah, who is the founding director of IIM Udaipur. Uh, so please, uh, you know, type the questions in the chat box. Uh, let me introduce Mr. Sujit Bhattacharya. Mr. Sujit Bhattacharya is an electrical engineer from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Sujit completed his MBA from the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. He enjoyed successful stints at Telco, India's largest engineering company, and Wipro, India's most valuable IT company. Before moving to the US to set up operations for Dharma Systems, an upcoming software firm. Having set up a successful software business, Sujit returned to his passion, technology and education. He joined Career Launcher in 2000 and headed the development out of the Silicon Valley itself of arguably the world's largest repository of K-12 science and math content using cutting-edge technologies. Sujit runs Indus World School Chain that is rated among the best school organization by GPT, GPTW survey, Great Places to Work. Uh, that's the full form of GPTW. Sujit was called the mind by his friends on the campus. Over to you, Sujit, sir. Uh, thanks, uh, Nishant. Uh, before I start, let me just do a quick uh, voice check. I hope uh, you can hear me. Just click on the tick mark. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, firstly, uh, a very warm welcome to all of you, uh, all the uh, attendees to this uh, wonderful webinar and, and a special welcome to the IIM Udaipur uh, team. Uh, Dr. Janat Shah, I, I don't know if you, re you, you probably not remember, but uh, in my, you know, the, the time I was in IIM Bangalore, uh, you did take a few courses for us and I have very clear memories of being in your class and uh, I remember you as a, a very young, energetic and, and a very dynamic professor then and I'm very glad that uh, today you are heading uh, the, the leadership position in IIM Udaipur and I'm, I'm, it just delights me no end to, to be with you today on, on a common uh, webinar. Uh, so, welcome to uh, the session. Uh, without wasting too much time, I think uh, what we would like to do today is uh, uh, spend a little time in asking Dr. Janat Shah to share his uh, thoughts about I am their book and we will have a, a, a free rolling unstructured uh, presentation from him. And after uh, spending some time over there, then we can take uh, question and answers and I will uh, be very really happy to moderate that. And in the second part of this presentation, we will ask the, uh, the students of uh, I am uh, therefore along with the faculty of CL to help you answer all the uh, queries and questions that you have. Uh, I think uh, the way uh, I would like to kind of conduct this uh, session uh, would be the first part could be a little more generic to understand about uh, I am therefore more and maybe the second part we can get into a little details about you know the, the very specific questions which our uh, participants may have. With that I'd like to hand over to Dr. Janan uh, Over to you sir. Thank you for those kind words and you made me a proud, you know, as a teacher who had taught you. Uh, welcome to all the attendees and let me join uh, in congratulating you to reaching up to the stage. Uh, I know it's a uh, great achievement. I know for one, but if I write a cat, I don't think I'll clear now. 
Harvard student, but I won't give it up. Let me try and tell you a little bit about uh, what management education is all about. I think several times, you know, I find people look at management education for a wrong reason. Uh, management education uh, essentially prepares you to think differently and prepares you to lead and impact the world. I think today world has a you know huge challenges and in a management education through multidisciplinary approach we hope to you know equip you with knowledge skills and perspectives to take those tough challenges tough problems of the world so it's not just for a corporate sector I think any part of life you look at, you should be able to apply those management principles and look at and solve those huge problems using those skills which you learn in management schools. Of course, we want everybody to have a good quality of life, but I think, you know, there's more to life than just earning money. So I hope you look at management education from a much broader perspective than what I find several of you look at. Uh, what, what do we look for? You know, honestly, it's not the science, but uh, any management institution, top quality management institution, look for certain attributes in a Student. And to me, the most important thing being having a curious mind. That you should be able to look at problems and be curious about what's happening around you. Of course, we look for academic excellence. Finally, we are an academic institution. And some of you don't like this part, but we do, do look at your 10th standard, 12th standard, undergraduate part. Because somewhere you go go through a very rigorous academic program, so it's important that we look at you know students who value academic excellence. So we value academic excellence. We look at analytical aptitude because it's important that when you look at these complex problems, you should be able to structure it, analyze it. So we do look at analytical aptitude and also leadership potential. Because finally, you know, you're going to lead uh, in, in, in whatever situation you are in, whether in a corporate world or any part of the world, you're going to lead. So leadership potential, but leadership potential does not mean not being a good team player. So we simultaneously look at both. You need to be a good team player and you need to have a leadership potential. And obviously you should be able to communicate well to the skills. Another thing we look for is the diversity because, you know, the complex problems are addressed when we get diverse set of minds together. So, you know, every, all good parents and schools would look for a diversity. So I guess, you know, that's uh, in a nutshell is what we would look for this, you know, our prospective students and I'm sure all top institutions would look at. Let me, you know, come to Ayam Udaipo. Now, you know, we are a young institution. We are proud to be the youngest child. We are a less than uh, 20 month old institution. What we be doing is looking at this whole, uh, you know, we are saying how do we build this with a great Institute, and they're doing everything, keeping 20-year horizon in mind. And they say, how do we do everything in whatever we do? Whether we talk about faculty, students, curriculum, we are working at 20-year horizon because education institutions are not built in the short-term horizon. If we look at top institutions in the world, they're all old institutions. So someday 
they say, how do we keep this horizon which are at least 20 years in mind? But at the same time, we realize that what we do at initial stage is very important. And somewhere, we need to make sure that we create the right culture among students, faculty, staff, and everyone. We think being a new institution is an advantage. Because we don't have a legacy, we have a clean slate. So when we design our curriculum, when we design our culture, we can do it in a way, the way we want. So what we've done is we looked at the best institutions in the world. Of course, you know, I have my own biases. I'm a student of Ahmedabad, I did my PhD there. I've taught for 20 years at I'm Bangalore. So obviously we have looked at those institutions. But we also looked at top institutions in the world and said, what are the, you know, the, when we want to prepare our students for the future challenges, what do we need to do? And, you know, let, let me just step back for a moment. And, you know, look at the environment today. And to some extent, you know, you, you guys are very lucky to be at the right point in time because this is going to be India's century. We are going to prepare, we are going to provide managers to the world. And to that extent, when we look at our curriculum at Amazon, we are saying, how do we create this managers of tomorrow who are going to provide leadership to the world? So let me just touch upon few things which we have tried to do in our curriculum. So as I said, we have an advantage that we are a new institution, we can do things the way we want. So, couple of things, you know, not necessarily in the order of importance, but couple of things which we have done here and we hope to do. First, as I said, since we are going to prepare managers for the global challenges, and it's going to be a tool which is going to work in a global environment, we think global mindset is very important. So we want every student of ours to have, ideally every student, a global immersion. So we have a course where our students go and work on a live project in a different cultural environment. And this year, 32 of our students went and spent, you know, two weeks working on a live project. Because I think global immersion is a very important part of a management curriculum. But simultaneously, they must be rooted and grown. So we also have a rural immersion where we take our students, they spend a couple of nights along with NGOs where they understand what's a rural reality. They look at rural environment both from a market perspective, they look at as a producer perspective, as a source of supply, and also as a research citizen. Because I think it's important that we have socially sensitive leaders. So we think the rural immersion someday is sensitized to do in finding equal them in finding whatever they do or do in life. At the same time, I think we are dealing with a world of big data. You know, the, the amount of data we deal with is immense. The data within a firm and data outside the firm. A lot of you, you know, unlike me, a lot of you are very active on a social media. And you will find that's a real, a, a, a different source of information for content. So how do we equip our students to handle this big data? So we are putting together an analytics lab which would, you know, and, and design whole range of courses in this area so that our students go out equipped with this analytical tools where they can handle big data. We want to, our students
students to work on a live project with a small and medium enterprise. He does two things. He throws out live, real life projects to you, and he also makes difference to the region because finally you are solving problems of small and medium enterprise within this region. We also provide industrial mentor to our students. So every student of us has an industrial mentor who is somebody who would have been in classroom 10 years back. And now they have spent 10 years in industry, 5 to 10 years in industry, and we want them to guide, you know, guide our students during their two years stay here. We focus a lot on ethical leadership. We have a course on ethics, which uh, we think is important part. We focus a lot on teamwork. Now all of this we try and do as a part of our curriculum. But we think what happens outside curriculum is equally important. Because in a management school, a lot of, you know, for example, leadership capability, we may not be able to develop in a classroom. So we support whole range of activities in that student class, and we think it's equally important what happens outside the classroom. We are, at I am other school are quite excited about what we try to do here. Currently, you know, we are in a temporary premise. But I can assure you that temporary promise is probably better than a lot of other campuses. Our classrooms, you know, I had, you know, said to myself from the beginning that even in a temporary premise, our academic MBS is very really comparable to our bangles. So our classrooms are state of art classroom, our IT connectivity, you know, we have one GBPS connectivity. We have our faculty which I would say is comparable to what you will find in the rest of the world. So I guess with that probably I will, you know, stop here and would be happy to take any questions which you may have.
right now we are taking full advantage of the fact that we are a small community. We are a community of 160 students. So we are saying how do we make sure that we involve students in activity, all activities which we do, including new campus design. You know, we go involve our students into say what should our campus be like. Right? So I think having attention which you get from our both faculty as well as staff which is of different kind when you are small. But I would say, you know, I'm sure Nash also has his own benefits. Thank you. Uh, a question which has come in, uh, maybe you will be the best person to answer this, is about the, uh, the methodology uh, uh, which is used in IIM Udaipur uh, and you know, perhaps your experience in IIM Bangalore as well as in IIM Ahmedabad, you could, you could you know, broad base this question and uh, give, give the audience a feel of uh, what are one of the specific you know methodologies for teaching which I am therefore is using, and how does that kind of contrast with uh, you know what you would have seen in the other ranks? Over to you. Okay, so I, yeah, uh, Sudhi, to some extent, I think significant part of management education uh, you will find all of us you know use extensively case methods. So I think use of case method as a you know dominant methodology pedagogy is something uh, which we also have been using. Uh, but I think couple of things which I was little worried about, which we're doing here. I talked about uh, this immersion experiences because a good management education has a three component. You should have a good conceptual input, you should have application part, and you should have a reflection. Now case method does bring part of the reality, but still it's a limited in some aspect. So in a significant process we will use a case, a case method, but we also want to look at immersion as a major element. And working on a real life problems. I think that's one area where we probably have not done too well, you know, and I think if you bring that part in our curriculum and pedagogy, then students would be more confident that they can really face real challenges of the world. So we are able to experiment that much more than a large campuses. So the whole idea of both all this global immersion, rural immersion is to have a learning and, and, and the, uh, uh, you know, real life project, a learning when you take your concepts, apply and finally reflect on it. And that, I think, it will result in a greater confidence to a student where I take on the real problems of the world. So I don't know if that fact uh, answer your question. Oh yes, I'm sure it does. Uh, uh, there is another related question to that. Uh, you know, you, you did uh, touch upon the fact that your own personal influence has been, uh, uh, you know, as a new institute especially, you were able to be influenced by uh, some of the newest things and uh, you did mention that you have extracted uh, a lot of things from the top international university. Would you want to just share a few of those uh, for all the students? Right, so, 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 so you know, this, this, this couple of issues which I talked about, one, this whole idea that is there a way we can do this loop of concept, application and reflection. That comes from a, a, a recent book by three Harvard professors who looked at uh, reinventing MBA. So essentially we are taking some of the ideas of application and reflection from that piece. Second, there is a global concern about what kind of leaders we are producing today. And we want to make sure that leaders are sensitive about you know, whether we talk about problems of the planet, whether we talk
talk about problems of you know uh, quality of life in slums or rural areas. Now, unless we create a socially sensitive and ethical leader, we are not probably doing justice to the world. So, that's something people are asking this question globally. People are saying, are we creating this business management graduates who are all worried about themselves and somewhere only shareholders or are they worried about uh, broader problems of the world and a lot of you know, problems of the world in terms of this 2008 meltdown and so lot of those challenges people have been tracing to the way probably we have been training our young graduates so the sum of this part in terms of having a business ethics course having the rural immersions are part of that exercise. We also try and get, for example, you know, last time when we inaugurated this batch, the person who inaugurated the batch is, you know, NGO who loves the Jaipur food. Someday we wanted to emphasize to students that management is much broader than just the corporate world. So these are some of the, you know, ideas which you have picked up. Now, I think there are whole lot of things which we can do which probably we are not doing. For example, one of the practices which I've been always, you know, uh, excited by. For example, in a Stanford Business School, they have an exams which is with no indigenation. Now. I would be very happy if I'm able, we are able to say that in Ayamudarpur, we've been able to do that. Right? Is there a way we can create a greater code of conduct where students will take responsibility for it? So, I think there are a lot of interesting, exciting things which you can do. Some of it which we're doing, some of which we hope to do. For example, another thing we hope to do in the next batch is lot more focus on entrepreneurship where can we from day one get students to focus on entrepreneurship. Now entrepreneurship does not necessarily mean starting a new venture. I think entrepreneurship is, is your, your, your state of mind where you focus on innovation. So even in a corporate sector, innovations are very important. So somewhere we want to bring that also as a part of our curriculum. What do you think? Very nice uh, response there, Dr. Janak. Uh, there's been a few uh, you know, questions, and I think I'll just pick one which is uh, of, of, uh, a little bit more related to the vision. Uh, you know, you're the founder and director of I Am Therefore, and uh, over the years, you know, different times tend to uh, pick up a certain positioning uh, in the minds of the students and they get known for certain things. Uh, what do you think, you know, five or ten years down the line, in your in your mind, where, where is I am Udaipur going to find a spot? What, what is your what is your sweet spot? Can you think about it? Over here? Okay, so I think we would you know like to be known as an institute which works both on mind and heart and essentially develop leaders and entrepreneurship who are socially sensitive, ethical and would make difference to the organizations in society. I would not like, you know, our students to be judged by the salary. You know, I would like to see that they make difference to the world and that's what, you know, we would like uh, our students to be and if 10 to 20 years down the line when people look at how our students have performed, you know, I'm sure one question to ask is hey, how many CEOs you produced. I would like to see in terms of saying when somebody writes saying there are the people who have made difference to the world, I would like you know, the I am therefore alumni to be there. Very nice, very nice. Uh, 
Um, uh, you know, a few, few of the standard questions, uh, you know, do you, do you have a view in terms of, uh, you know, the amount of emphasis given to experience versus you know, engineering and science versus the arts, the, the, the typical, uh, you know, profile choices which ions get related to, uh, any specific views on that? Uh, you have any right. So, so I, I believe diversity is very important. You know, when you when you when you when you get a classroom or a students in a group, it, it's very important that we have a diverse points of view. And to that extent, if we are able to get a classroom and a group, student groups, to bring in this diversity, that's very important. We do value work experience. So currently 80% of our students have a work experience. But I also believe, you know, you know, young graduates also bring a value. So I would like a mix, so I'm very happy with the current mix which we have, where 80% students have a some work experience and 20% are fresh. Because even they, as I said, you know, you know, not having, being in part of a corporate life also brings in something to the classroom. So I think if you have a similar profile where we have a mix, we have a diversity, diversity in all towns, diversity on the gender, diversity on the educational background, geographical diversity, unfortunately one diversity which we do not have is, you know, finding all students are from India. So to that extent, you know, we started working on a student exchange program from year one, where last year, uh, you know, six of our students uh, went to uh, uh, different universities on exchange program. We hope to add, you know, a uh, few more schools this year. Uh, so with a result, we can yeah, have at least this year itself another again. 12 to 14 students will go on exchange programs. And similarly, last year we had uh, three students from France coming to our program. We hope this year again at least 10 students would come uh, to our campus. And we do believe Udaipur has a location advantage there because, you know, when people look at um, other countries, Udaipur is a one destination they would like to be. So, I think over a period of time we see ourselves as, uh, you know, we would have a very strong exchange program. As I said, currently uh, we already have, uh, you know, MOU with three schools. We are hoping to tie up the two more schools in probably next two months. So this student, ex because global migration is very important to us, student exchange program and this international business and practice would be very important for us. And we have actually already have an office, which is an international uh, program office uh, in place. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Jalal, just moving uh, on to a slightly different uh, and a more broad-based question. There's a question from the audience. Why are more and more I serving to the extempore instead of DD? Any, any views on that? Okay, so so I think uh, one part was that you know CAD does not capture capture the written and written part of a communication, and so so there were there were concerns that somehow we were not you know students we were getting students who had a poor written uh, communication skills. So that's why, you know, most of the apps have added this written assessment part of it. Regarding GD, uh, I, would, I, prob I would answer that question, but I'm not probably the right person to answer that question. But what, what happened is my sense is when people looked at a course of GD and uh, uh, interview scores, uh, so we do this analysis all the time. 
you know, we, we try to look at how students did in the program and how students performed in the various components of this assessment. And either GD was highly correlated with the interview scores that you are saying why I am doing that or when they looked at GD performance with a you know, two year program performance they found a weak correlation. Now, I am not an expert on the admission, so I don't know what was the cause, but somewhere there was a sense from the data that GV probably was not adding significant value. But the written assessment was missing piece and that's how that's been added. Relocate to Vaipur, 
for some time. So we have a 15 person of our faculty who are not based at the level. You know, if IT industry can say that you can work from home, I can say we can do something similar in academic environment. So one third of their time they spent physically here and two third of their time they spent in uh, their base uh, and actually all three are women. Uh, second, we think it's important to get people who are in industry and who uh, have academic inclination. So we have a model where we are encouraging somebody who has spent 15 years after doing, you know, MBA from uh, top institution, and we will facilitate PhD degree. Because I think that would be a great combination that you have a good industry experience and then you go to do a PhD so you bring a river also. So currently we have one faculty in the back model and we are just in the process of hiring two other faculty in the back model. I think I would like to believe that we are already institution of first choice at least among uh, when it comes to faculty. And Yes, I think the, 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 the uh, students should go and look at faculty profiles you know, when they are selecting institutions. But I will tell you one more thing which is not there on our website, which is about our administration. You know, we also have outstanding administration and two of our, you know, senior administrators actually come from Ayamantala. Uh, one of our program manager was with Ayan Ahmedabad for 40 years. So he brings the culture of Ayan Ahmedabad in terms of how do we uh, instill that culture in our students. So for example, uh, you know, he would know every student by name. He is there at 9 o'clock in the morning outside looking at who is coming at what time. Right? Uh, we also have in a, a, a unique position called student affair manager. Uh, you know, we have a Joel who is PDT and part, you know, the cultural secretary there, because we want him to focus on activities outside the curriculum. So I think it's not just in terms of faculty, I think we have great faculty, but in terms of our practices, our administration setup, we have a great administration setup. So, you know, we, we think we have figured out what we need to do, but we need to do it for the next 20 years. If we do that right, I am quite convinced that we have a great institution. And I think this country needs large number of good institutions. So we think this is just an attempt in that direction. Sorry for a little long-winded answer, but you know, it's not just faculty, but the faculty plus staff plus the overall culture. Back to you. Thank you to uh, uh, Dr. Young. No, I think uh, uh, we will need to do time and yeah, uh, I, I think we'll have to just
Shannon, they could take the presentation forward, please, from that. Thank you, thank you, Sri. Is, um, and the students also over there is that uh, some of the students are constantly asking this question that do ions prefer people with work experience over pressure? Yeah, so actually at least you know that part is explicitly stated in the admission policy that there is a you know in terms of profile uh, there is a weightage uh, which is about 30 uh, so totally, you know, we have fifty percent for attendance, we have fifty percent for interview, and twenty percent for profile. And out of this, one of the components is in experience. So we do value experience, but as I said, current batch, we do have twenty percent students which are fresh. So I think that mix is what we really appreciate. But yes, there is a uh, weightage given to experience. I don't know, I, I hope that answers the question. Thanks. But you know, this is reasonably, you know, well defined in the admission policy. Right, thank you, sir. Uh, there's a student who asks a question, what does an iron look for in VAT? That is the writing ability test. Okay, okay. Uh, essentially, you know, you will go communicate as a, as a, uh, during the program as well as later point in life, you will communicate in a written form extensively. So, we, we want to simply see are you able to communicate your ideas. It's not about English. It's not about whether what it, it can be simple, but are you able to communicate in a written form your ideas. That's what we want to assess in the written assessment. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's another question which was coming up and it says that I have worked in a labor intensive industry for 30 months. Is it going to be of an advantage? Well, I think uh, we say that finally uh, we, we expect our you know students to be leaders in life. And to me, if you have handled more people, obviously it's a huge advantage because uh, both during the program, because there are several courses which deal with these issues, so obviously it's an advantage. Thank you. Uh, but then we just add one more thing here, the experience, you know, ideally only if uh, you know, if somebody could do same thing again and again for years, it's not really great experience. So it's not simply years of experience, though we are not able to capture that very well. In the interview process, you will find people questioning on that. A lot of time, one is also looking at quality of experience. Right, sir. That's very well said, sir. Uh, there's a very interesting question that has come up and it says a strong alumni base is something every MBA aspirant seeks. They learn a lot from them. Is it something we'll be devoid in IIM Udaipur? You're absolutely right. I think alumni base is very important. 
So what we have done is we have found a creative way of solving some of these issues. And we are doing two things. One which we are doing is having a mentor. And there, you know, it's, 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 it's nice to see a lot of people coming forward to help us there. Uh, so we have been looking at several, I am Bangalore, I am Ahmedabad alumni, who have been acting as a mentor to all the students. So that's one part. Second, you know, I would probably request Joel, you want to talk about it. We have a, we are looking at ideas of friends of family. You know, so the whole idea is, is there a creative way in which we can create a community even though we do not have alumni? Over to Joel. So, okay. Uh, the, the way we are looking at this, uh, the way we are looking at this is uh, we have identified a few areas where a lot of people have been interested in the well-being of Ayam Udaipur. They have liked the idea that here is a new institution and it needs some kind of support in terms of alumni base, in terms of people from the industry who can give feedback, who can give guidance, who can give to mentoring. So we have uh, uh, people who have uh, 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years experience from the industry who have been associated with in some way with this institute, either as students or Professor Shah or some other faculty or as uh, contacts in various uh, people who are present on this campus. Plus we have a lot of people who originally are from Udaipur or Rajasthan and who are excited about the fact that there is a new IM in their city and in their state and they want to be associated and they want to come and share their time, share their uh, knowledge with people uh, from this campus. And the third uh, uh, group of people is people who are associated with this institute uh, either uh, in a corporate relationship like with recruiters or uh, when we are doing some assignments in consulting or we are having uh, people on that campus visiting as visiting faculty as well. So there is this huge group of people who we have who have come together and this group right now comprises uh, not less than 100, 150 people. So these, this group currently we have put under the umbrella of you know, Friends of I and other group. And this group is actually the group which is involved in a lot of mental activity. Uh, this group is kind of like a, uh, a small, uh, like I am with this own alumni base without having anyone having graduated from this yet. So it is, it, is, it is very comforting and it is uh, very, very interesting, very interesting group and their commitment to the institute, the progress of the institute and the campus uh, is amazing and that has held us in good stead in having people from the industry come and speak and you know, get a network. Now, we are at this level where we are reaching out to these hundreds and hundreds of people. Tomorrow, these people will reach out to more people and will also connect of I am Udaipur, or friends of I am Udaipur. That uh, body will grow and once we have our students graduating into the school, we will be part of a larger ecosystem where in spite of having been around for a shorter period of time, we have a very uh, large and experienced group so looking out for our interests of the Does that answer your question? Hi, thank you. I think uh, to answer the question very well. Uh, there is a student who says that uh, I do not have anything outstanding in my CV, you know, which reflects leadership. So would that impact me in the personal interview? Uh, I think we look at a leadership potential. So, so. Uh, Obviously, if you have demonstrated leadership, it helps. But you know, we look at uh, so many different dimensions. So I think, you know, rather than saying I do not have something, it would be a good idea to focus on what you have. And please treat the you know, panel as a with your friend who wants to understand you. So focus on your strength. And it's not necessarily our take part as every cops. 
Right, sir. Uh, well, sir, I would also like you to, you know, step in at this point of time and uh, make the students understand what leadership is all about because a lot of them are usually, you know, coming up with queries, what is this leadership, what is leadership, so you guys keep on talking about leadership, etc, etc. So, Dr. Chai, I would like you to have this way to do the term, etc. See, okay. I mean, I'm not going to define leadership, <laughs> uh, right? But I think, you know, a, a, a simple definition of leader is to actually look at the well-being of the team, right? Where it's not my own personal utility function, my own personal uh, agenda. I'm more worried about taking the entire team along, well-being of a team, because the leader will ensure that if I have a 10 people, then can I ensure that the output is not just addition of that individual, but something much larger. So, you cannot have a leader without a follower. So, the whole idea is, you, you go uh, to each, you know, lead corporation, you go Several times you are going to be in a position where you do not have authority. It's not necessary to have authority for to be a leader. Somebody like Gandhi, right, didn't have any position most of the time. So we talk about a leader who would lead, right? And as I said, I'm I'm sure uh, I don't know whether to definite the state, but I hope this take care of the founder. And then what we want to do is we are aware of the fact <coughs> that fortunately a lot of undergraduate programs in our schools do not provide opportunities to so, we would like to make sure that with our students we provide opportunities and we work with them for developing the leadership to them. Right. Thank you, sir. Very well defined. I hope the students would have some clarity about leadership now. Uh, there's another very interesting question that's coming up and somebody says that despite having a high cap percentile, you know, we do not usually get calls from all the IMs, so uh, Dr. Shah, if you could throw some light upon it. Look, you know, I think one thing you would have seen that different IMs okay, give different weightages. Now, right. you will find uh, some IMs, for example, six uh, IMs, at the, at the uh, interview stage, we are only looking, because we since we are calling a large pool, we are only looked at a cat school. But there are several institutions which look at even the tech standard and standard cost, another profile damage, high value for So, it's just this difference between what they look at while, you know, calling students in that would answer some of these questions. But finally, you know, what you will find is two things which is the finance policy up front. So, uh, you should be able to see that in those respective policies. So we are in a world of transparency where all of us have been reasonably transparent in terms of every stage of the selection process. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh, then there is another question which I would like you to take up. Uh, this says, what are the prerequisites for getting into the marketing stream? What do IMs expect from the applicants? Look, it's a wrong question because if you start uh, deciding that I want to be an X stream, Y stream before you have entered the institute, I think something is wrong. I think the whole idea of education should be that you come to institute, enter good courses, and then start making those decisions. You know, I would advise everybody not to make those kind of decisions before you have started the program. Only when you experience courses, 
then you will start realizing that what each of us do. You know, don't try to make those decisions so early in life. I would even advise students that don't even make that decision in the end of the day. Look at as many people you meet after going through several schools. You know, then you start making those choices, not so early. I don't know, but it may be a good idea if, if uh, the students do want to answer this question. We may be in a better place to answer this question about the uh, uh, idea of you know, deciding field of specialization so early in life. A lot of us before we uh, come into college, ma'am, there's an echo in your mic. Yeah. Now what's your College decide that we either want to get into marketing or we want to get into HR. Uh, these are usually the most uh, talked about subjects before we decide to pursue a management education. Uh, a lot of us who come here with only uh, with zero months work experience or less than two years work experience do not know in detail about other things which are taught to us here during management. So it's very important that you come here with an open mind, uh, understand all uh, the, the variety of choices which an MBA education is going to provide you. Because before coming here, you really don't, uh, you, you, you have very tunnel vision, so you can't really see everything. When you come here, do your first year of education here, you will see a plethora of opportunities opening up to work uh, in What I need to add is that uh, there's a lot of exposure that we get out there. And that exposure really helps us to have a broad-minded view. So then we can actually decide, you know, there are many people who have come to the mindset of going to finance. But, you know, they come out and they see that there's more into consulting or marketing. So it's really subjective. And then come out there. So I would like to say, if you want to keep an objective mind and prepare accordingly. Right, thank you. Uh, there is another very interesting question which has come up and uh, there is a gentleman who asks why are more engineers selected than commerce students? Is it engineering and management? Are they two different streams? Well, I think, I think, uh, you know, uh, one of the reasons we gave our diversity score was to see if we can get greater diversity. We don't have anything against engineers, but I think the diversity is important. So that's the reason we gave the score. Uh, but for some reason we found that it didn't make any difference. So we had 85% engineers in our first batch. We have 85% engineers in our second batch. Can't say. So I think Probably there's a, if you look at the applicant pool, that itself, for whatever reason, seems to be a large number of engineers. Uh, so whatever preferences we have, we put, you know, upfront in our admission policy. We don't try and do any discrimination at the interview stage. I hope that, you know, answers to some extent this question. Right, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, there's uh, one gentleman who asked, does being from BITS or IIT help women placements from IIT? Well, I think uh, it occurred to students if you want to answer this question. Uh, in terms of being from BITS or uh, IIT, does it help you in the placement? Uh, I, I first must say, you know, uh, in general, at the institute, we don't differentiate between them, right? So, we don't do that kind of IIT being from IIT or BIS definitely gives you a little edge, but uh, what companies and what institutes look for is what you're doing now rather than what you did after your when you pass out from the standard. So, um, I would recommend anyone who is from a very famous institute not to be complacent just because they are from, uh, from an institute and really concentrate on uh, 
what is my priority and what you are what you currently are. To provide you with a lesson definitely, a bit an IIT is a brand just like IIT. Uh, it will provide you with that push, a start, but that's not everything. Great, thank you. Uh -huh. A student says, what can we include in our extracurricular activities? Is it necessary to support it with certificates? I think uh, uh, the natural part of it, you know, a lot of students have queries about that. The inclusion uh, of extracurricular activities supported by certificates.
Thank you, Dr. Shah, for this very reply, a thoughtful reply, and which puts a lot of onus on the academic community as well as the future students also who are going in. Now, there's a question which has come up. It says, how an aspirant with almost four years of experience in IT help in changing the field from IT to finance marketing consulting? Is more work X a negative aspect? I mean, what he's talking about probably is, uh, you know, changing his streams and if he has more of work X, would that uh, hold against him? I'll request Joel to answer that question. See, uh, like it was, uh, like sir mentioned earlier, uh, it is not the duration of your work ethic which matters, but it's the quality of your work experience. So, uh, you would, uh, you know, uh, in a kind of scenario where somebody has been working for four years, if there has been a definite growth in the amount of responsibility that this person has held, the amount of uh, the, uh, the leadership opportunity that this person has uh, uh, got and what kind of growth they have seen uh, in that particular organization. So it really does not matter what uh, whether it is four years, as long as the work that has been done, the growth in terms of the person has been commensurate. So that is something which brings valuable experience to the classroom and over the two years a person has an opportunity to, you know, uh, go through the first step course, understand what each of these functions are that we've spoken about, finance, uh, consulting, marketing, understand what they mean and then give yourself an opportunity to build a profile, to build a, you know, a resume, a CV, which, which, helps to, uh, which helps to leverage your work experience positively towards achieving your goal in terms of what your ambition is. So it, it actually uh, boils down to the quality of the work experience. So, duration of a work experience uh, would not be considered a negative in, in the absolute sense. Right, thank you, Joel. Uh, then another question which comes up, uh, it says that does it matter the university from where one does his undergraduation, uh, does it matter? In some universities, one gets marks easily than in the others, and, there one, and uh, in some, one lags behind the marks consideration of IIM. Does IIM take into consideration the fact that, uh, you know, various universities award different kind of marks? Uh, see, uh, I, I think it, it's, it's a fair question. It's just that probably uh, we are not, uh, so, so we have stated up front that we are not doing, uh, we treating all marks from all universities in the same way. Uh, I agree that uh, it will be much better if we are able to do better differentiation. But unfortunately, in the absence of certain, you know, benchmarks, it's very difficult to do that part and with a result we have resisted doing it. I know in the process some people are entirely penalized, but we do not have a, a better way in which we can do this normalization across universities. Right, and that's the reason you will find relatively undergraduate score has a lower weightage, at least in our scheme of things. Tainted standard, maybe our greater standardization, we have given a higher weightage. Right, thank you. Uh, there's uh, a question which uh, most of the students are uh, asking, and uh, it says that how can one justify why MBA? And what should be the answer to that? That is, most of them ask otherwise also. So, Dr. Chai, if you would want to throw some light on this. No, I, I think, you know, one suggestion I would have is always be honest. You know, if you will try and give answers which you do not believe, the parents usually figure it out. So, I think the issue which I talked about earlier at my opening which is what is management education all about. And to me, what it does is allows you to look at this complex problems of work in a multidisciplinary way. It allows you to, you know, look at these big problems. So I think somewhere Uh, so your voice has 
सर दो के इंस्टीट्यूट तीन जीती There is no voice from your end. I think uh, we have lost uh, Dr. Shah's uh, voice because of the internet connectivity probably. for people 
who have fresh ideas, who are not bogged down by the work or the experience, work experience that they have and they have customized profiles, they have customized their own uh, induction programs, training programs within the company which will gladly accept people who do not have prior work who have a good uh, MBA education and mold them according to their requirements. So it actually depends and there are there is a fair mix of both kind of companies on any campus that you can go to today in India. Right, thank you. Uh, there's a question which says that I worked in a company for seven months, I have experienced later but no salary slips, I have paid hard cash. How can I justify that I do not have salary slips? I think we'll have to, uh, this, is, this is unusual for us. Uh, we were wondering how, how something like this happens and I think this is a window into another experience of how things work in India. But I think uh, a candidate like this when it, he comes in front of a panel, uh, the panel would, would be able to very easily uh, you know, make out because they would probe people and they would probe about the kind of work that was done and from that they will be able to uh, assess whether or not the kind of experience that a person is talking about is valid or not valid. So that's the only answer I can give at this point. Thank you. Uh, I think we can go through the rest of the slides at this point in time as in when we get more questions from the students, we'll take them up because most of the questions are now becoming repetitive. Okay. Be prepared to be grilled on your resume. 
if uh, let's say you're from a mechanical engineering background but you work for a couple of years in the IT industry, you still need to be prepared with one favorite subject from your graduation. There could be questions asked from this. And finally, don't lose your calm. Okay, then uh, we'll start off with the other thing is on, which we had start out with. We'll start off with the core structure which we have, and basically in the academic section, like every other people, we have on economics, finance, marketing, strategy, statistics and OB, organization behavior. And the additional things in which we have an AM with a third, we can look down on the exposure part, in which we have the rural motion part and student exchange program, the IPT program, international business practices, and industry instructions. The rural and the motion program which we have in the poster itself is that we have sent to villages for one week. We spend time with different villages. We understand what problems they have and we try to come up with a solution of how we can make better to the society and the village and how what we can do simple ideas, generation, uh, low cost, everything. We go there, we come up with our own ideas and then basically that's how we go forward. Again, so moving forward, let us uh, show you all the faculty that uh, come up and I am able to teach us. These are the list of prominent faculty which we have. We have Professor Abhinandan Jain, Saha sir and everyone. For example, Abhinandan Jain sir is for teaching us marketing. We have Ramesh Bhatt sir who is from Ayam Andhra who has also uh, been to Howard Business School. He has taught us finance. We have Sriram sir who has taught us finance. So we have a great variety of teachers uh, who teach, uh, teach us. Also I like to add because we are in Odepur, we do have good connectivity out there from Ayamdavar, it's just 4 to 5 hours away. So you can see in this slide also there are many professors from Ayamdavar for the same reason. And also like our director, he, he, he has been in Ayam Bangalore for the last 20 years over there. So we have good connection with Ayam Bangalore also for the faculty. And uh, like, uh, now I want to uh, want you to go through all the, 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 the design of the course which makes our, makes our institute unique. <coughs> we, uh, uh, my colleagues talked about the rural immersion program and we also, like the director said, about the global immersion program where we try to send maximum number of students uh, abroad to learn more about their cultures and the working style. This is done may, uh, primarily through the student exchange program, the international uh, business program where uh, we uh, we work with the company for uh, about two weeks. Apart from that, we also give a lot of live projects with modern medium uh, medium scale industries uh, scattered around Udaipur. Uh, Apart from that, industry net is one thing that we focus on because we already know that uh, we have uh, we lack upon alumni networks. So industry mentors from all the major, uh, all the old IMs help us uh, throughout our stay and um, uh, throughout the stay and uh, guide us with uh, guide us with our decisions. Apart from this, we focus we uh, we have heavily focused on team teamwork. Our groups are assigned and we have to submit our assignments and study with them which helps us learn more and more about teamwork and there is also a lot of focus on co-curricular activities. We are heavily encouraged to take part in most of the business school competitions and the competitions that happen within the IIM with the first circuit. Also, the Bhutan of Government uh, would like to point out that we are one of the few institutes, there's the three institutes in India who have the material dominance. And this is a snapshot of that. Moving forward. Okay. In a correction, we are one of the two instances of the Bloom of Terminal. Moving forward. The back profile. Oh, you have already seen this slide. The back profile and it's already been uh, discussed further. If anyone has any queries, it can be taken later up. 
going on with the industry instruction. We have a cell, the MIC cell, the media and industry instruction cell over there which we have pointed by the lake, which is a theory in which we call different people from the industry to talk to the batch. And this is a snapshot of all the people who have come from different industries and different companies. These are all big people like the founder, the managing director and co-founder, VP in sales, marketing, etc. So that people, basically the students, we get a idea of how things are out there in the industry, what they are expecting from us and what they are looking for from us, basically. This is a small snapshot of the summer placement which were going on for the batch, current batch 2012 and 2014. These are the companies which have come up and taken almost most of the batch. Going forward, let's just give you an overview of the clubs and committees which we have out there. You can see a wide variety of clubs and committees in the second year itself. We have the Toastmasters Club, which we, we, we are really proud of because we are the only institute with a Toastmaster Club. We have MIT, Media and Industry Instruction Cell, and the rest. Next, this is a snapshot of all these clubs and some of these activities that keep on happening in the campus. On the top, you can see the leadership summit. That was the grand event that happened last year. It, was, it had taken place in the city palace of Ayam Mudapur. Later, you can see also people participating in different fest, cult fest. We have Earth Sambat, which is a finance symposium. Then again, we have uh, Leap the Lit Fest. This is the sports committee which we have and it is very specific and it is very unique for us, our college. We have the football league, we have the cricket league, we have the volleyball league in which basically we choose different teams on the same uh, criteria as uh, it happens in the real world. Now Udipo, the city of play. This is a basic snapshot of what you can expect from Udipo as a city. Now, life at I am Mudapur. Now, this is what everyone wants to know how things happen. So, on the left, you can see a, a snapshot from a classroom, and on the right, you can see how we all study. Now, you all ex need to expect a really hectic schedule out there, and group study is a must. And everything, let me tell you one thing every, all these studies unite us really closely, and it helps us in future because these relationships which you build right now are your uh, new life. Base and they really help you in the future. So that will be all from the student side, giving us access of all the things that happen in Udipur campus and Udipur campus. Thanks, I'm a Udipur team, thanks, I'm Udipur students. I would request uh, the attendees over here if you have any other uh, one questions, you know, because most of the questions are actually becoming repetitive. We have answered most of the questions uh, on work experience, uh, honesty in an interview, uh, academic, etc. So, if there are any uh, unique questions that you want to put, uh, you know, we will wait for such questions for another five minutes and then I would ask the uh, I am a Deadpool team uh, to, you know, say some uh, uh, words, uh, advisors to the students. So, if you have any valid questions, please post them in the chat box. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, I would like uh, uh, this question to be taken up. It says that I am unable to make my decision over CAT or higher education as presently a third year undergraduate in mechanical engineering. Can you please guide me? Can you repeat the question? Uh, I this is uh, Joel speaking. Uh, Professor Shah had to leave because of some prior commitment. Uh, okay. I take that question. Uh, in terms, if you are still in your third, in the third year of your undergraduate education. I think it would be best uh, to focus on focus on finishing the undergraduate education as possible academic record because as you are seeing it actually carries a lot of weight and I think uh, the idea is to explore whatever options you have in, and to speak to people 
and to get as many different opinions as possible so that your knowledge about what you want to do in your future grows. And the second thing to do is to look at yourself and to do an introspection and to understand what are you good at and what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses so that you can, uh, are, you, are you better at technical or are you better at handling people, are you better at doing things, doing, looking at many things at the same time and that will help you make a decision over the next year. Hey, thank you, Joel. Uh, uh, so, uh, Joel uh, and your team, I would uh, request you to, you know, uh, to sum up the entire session with some uh, kind of uh, and valuable advice to the students because now I see all the questions becoming all very repetitive. See, in terms of uh, in terms of the audience that is out there, and uh, to uh, you know to sum it up in a way and to address their anxieties. Uh, what I'd like to say is, uh, one of the first things that is in front of you is uh, the process which is to be done, that is the WAT and the BI process. In terms of preparation for these, please understand that uh, this process is to evaluate you as a candidate and as a candidate, uh, it is best for you to first introspect and to understand yourself very well. If a candidate walks in and if that candidate start speaking uh, in a way that's, you know, smacks of training, where he's not speaking his own mind, but he's speaking what he has been taught to say, that is very easily identifiable, and that is a short sure shot recipe for not getting selected. A lot of people have made this mistake in the past, a lot of people continue to make this mistake year on year. It is very important to take some time, spend some time, look at what your life has been, look at what your uh, education, what your work experience, look at the particulars, see what you have learned at each each point of uh, time in your life, what are the skills that you bring to the table when you come for the interview, how do you justify that you have those skills or how do you justify that you don't have some skills but you have the potential to develop those skills. These are the things and when honestly conveyed, there is the amount of confidence with which you can talk about these things is immense and that comes across and that is something which will uh, the panel will keep the cut. So the idea is a lot of people are, are taught and wrongly so that they can control, you know, and they should control the direction in which their interview goes and they should not let it go in one particular way or not let it go in another particular direction. And, uh, you know, but the point that I would like to tell you is like, as Sir mentioned, look at the fact, look at the faculty panel sitting in front of you or the panel of uh, experts sitting in front of you, as somebody who are there to know you as well as possible in the 15 to 20 minute interaction that they have, uh, that they will have with you. If in those 15, 20 minutes you come out of the interview feeling that, okay, this is me and the panel knows me very well after these 15 minutes of interaction, your interview has gone very well. If not, then maybe there are some ways where you can improve and probably work on it. But if, if you come out with this feeling that the panel knows you, Thank well, you. then you will know for a fact that you have a very good chance at doing so. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, I would like to thank the entire IAM Udaipur team, uh, Dr. Janat Shah and his team for spending their valuable time and you know guiding the students over here. And uh, for the students, again, I have this parting advice that be honest, work on your uh, hobbies, interests, academics, be well prepared and go in for the interview. And this session would be uh, made live on your SIS uh, in a couple of days. So those of you, you know, who would like to revisit it can also do that. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks to all the panelists and all the attendees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rajiv, uh, we can ask the host to close the session. <laughs>